werden mit Genitiv. So verbs with genitive. This is part 6 of my series about Verben mit Ergänzung, so verbs with uh, complements. Today's topic is verbs with genitive case. So today I will show you which verbs actually require you to use the genitive uh, case. And small hint in advance, most of them can't really use the genitive only. They need more than just the genitive. Hi, my name is Jan and I'm your German teacher here on Easy Deutsch, your YouTube channel for German grammar. Today's topic is Verben mit Genitiv, so verbs with genitive uh, complements. The verbs that really require you to use the genitive case. And with the help of my ebook, I will teach you now everything you have to know. So let's switch into my ebook. So we're here now in my ebook, German grammar explained easily. Today's topic is verbs with genitive, verben mit genitiv. So we are almost here in the table of content. There we go. So let's zoom in. You've already know, at least if you've watched my videos or if you checked German grammar a little bit, that verbs can force you to use a certain case. And the most common one is the accusative case. Some use the dative case, but there's also a few verbs that actually use genitive case. To be fair, those aren't that many and most of them you will only encounter from like B2 or above. So be aware if you're only A1, A2, you don't really need to go through this right now unless you want to have it 100% complete. But if you're in a more basic level, you won't really need that much. The words that you will see in this lesson will not be relevant uh, to you. But like from B1, I recommend you to check it out. But most of it is actually a B2 and above. And here you have to be aware, many of them actually use the nominative obviously as a subject, but not only the genitive, but the genitive in combination with the accusative. So similar, like you can also have dative and accusative in one sentence. If you haven't checked out that video yet, I will link that in the info cards for you. And also if you have no idea what a complement is, Ergänzung in German, please check out the first video of this video series here that I will link for you right now in the info cards because it's important that you know what's the difference between a complement and the adjunct, so obligatory thing in the sentence and just nice to have a thing in the sentence. Because today we're talking about the obligatory stuff, so the verbs that actually force you to use the genitive case. And the verbs that actually use the genitive case as their direct object in case of the accusative are actually not really a lot. Those two here plus noun verb combination here are the most common ones. So stuff usually that is commemorating something or you're telling something about to master something. So wir gedenken der Toten. So it means we think about the uh, we commemorate that. You can also say wir in uns an die Toten. So we are remembering the people. Wir bedürfen der Hilfe means wir brauchen Hilfe. So we need help. Wir werden der Situation her means wir werden die Situation unter Kontrolle bringen. So means we will get the situation under control. You can see here in my ebook, I always wrote the different version because usually you can actually say the exact same thing in an easier way because all of this is really not a day-to-day -day language. So that's not colloquial language. So it's nothing you will encounter on a regular day. This is really like if you want to sound extremely well, if you want to sound like snobby in this kind of environment, you will listen to it. 
it. Or maybe if you're reading really old literature, then you might encounter this as well. The first one, maybe a little bit more often whenever you're somewhere at a monument, they're usually erected to do exactly this. But those two are, they sound a little bit that's really you want to show off that you're really highly educated if you say this and most of the verbs that require genitive are actually those ones here that put an extra accusative in here for example ich erinnere mich der alten zeiten so i remember the good old times so you always have to put the mich in here because they're all reflexive they're all reflexive verbs uh, and the noun here use the accusative case at all time if you don't know what's a reflexive verb please check out the video in the info cards right now here as well i gave you the easier version in german because you can always replace that with an easier version so instead of ich erinnere mich der alten zeiten you can also say ich erinnere mich an die alten zeiten so here again you have a preposition and if you've watched my other videos you should know that by now a preposition Preposition overrules any other rule. In the moment you have a preposition here, doesn't matter what the verb wants. It is the case of the preposition. So this applies for the genitive as well, not only for accusative, dative, genitive as well. If you have a preposition, whatever the preposition wants, that's the case you have to use. And here it's accusative because of the preposition an. Ich schäme mich meiner schlechten Aussprache. So I am ashamed of my bad pronunciation again add a preposition and it's accusative so we can avoid that and that's usually in the day-to-day -day language those are the versions you would hear this is again if you want to show off then you say this ich erfreue mich des lebens means ich habe spaß am leben so i enjoy life but in a really Again, in a really snobby way, this is very just to show off uh, pretty much in a normal conversation. You will barely hear this. You would rather hear like, ich genieße das Leben. So what is the one by one translation from I enjoy life? Ich brüste mich meiner Erfolge. So ich gebe mit meinen Erfolgen an. This is, I'm not a native speaker, but according to Google, this means more I boast of my success and this is more like I brag about my success. So this is the one that everybody would use in a day-to-day -day language and this is again if you really want to show oh my big vocabulary and ich halte mich ich enthalte mich der Stimmabgabe means ich gebe meine Stimme nicht ab so I abstain from voting is the translation here or from giving the vote word by word so that's to abstain this is maybe one of the words that is really in use if you actually have a use for it this is not something that is really super Super bragging if you use it that's normal but it's a rare case that you actually have to use it and again you can also use the easier version here with a different verb ab nicht abgeben in this case ich gebe meine Stimme nicht ab so here you can see what's usually happening we use an alternative version instead of the genitive in day-to-day -day language but there are a few more verbs that are actually really in use and there is not really an alternative version for them so here that's more like a description of what they the words mean because this is usually everything you need in curt like to accuse to convict to blame suspect those are the words where you actually really use genitive case and there is no alternative version and that's what is really in use so let's have a look at those man klagt in der korruption an so he is a accused of corruption. This means the state attorney says that he has committed a crime. Anklagen. So this is already the state says you committed a crime, we want to prove it. Or we think we have enough to prove it. Man verdächtigt ihn des Verbrechens. So he is suspected of the crime, word by word. Means there are some evidence that actually is pointing in this direction, but he is not convicted yet. Man beschuldigt ihn des Verrats. So this is another version of accusing. So he's accused of treason 
season. And the difference between those two is here you probably have a proper, some proper evidence. Here it's just a thought or something that came up in your mind and you think like this, but it's not really that you have any hard evidence uh, pointing in this direction. Um, man bezichtigt ihn in der Straftat. This is again something like to accuse him or he's, he's going to be blamed for this a crime. But this in general means we use this word when it's actually wrong. It's a wrong accusation. And man überführt in das Verbrechen. So he's convicted or he is actually, it's proven that he did the crime. Why did I do this in such a detail that you understand those words? Well, those are the ones that you actually need with the genitive case. The rest, you probably will always use the alternative version. Understand the version with it, but I highly recommend you to use the version without the genitive case. That's what most Germans do as well. And apart from that, you use genitive after prepositions and in noun, noun constructions. And if you want to know more about that and don't know for sure yet when exactly use genitive case, I highly recommend you to actually check out my video about the genitive case that I will link in the info cards for you right now. Now you should know everything. But if you have any further question, please do not hesitate to ask your question in the comment section below. I always try to answer all your questions. And if you like this video, I would highly appreciate it if you leave the like here, if you share it with your friends, and of course, if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. That's always a great support. Thank you very much for this. Or you like the ebook that you've just seen here in this video, you can actually buy this alone or together with its nine other friends. Yes, I published 10 ebooks about German grammar already. I always explain everything to you in an easy to understand way from a student's perspective. And of course, uh, there are also exercise ebooks so that you can actually practice what you've just learned here in my videos. The link to all my ebooks you will find in the video description below. And that's it for today. And I hope I will see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, viel Spaß und Erfolg beim Deutschlernen.